Tenko Hacks, a podcast about wellness, health and biohacking. Today, I am super excited to have a guest um, as Dr. Elena Seranova as our guest, who has a PhD in stem cell biology and autophagy from the University of Birmingham and recently started her own company to make available top quality third party verified NMN supplements. I'm very excited to dive deep into discussions of NAD, NMN, and autophagy with you, Dr. Serenova. I'm really happy to be here as well. Uh, thank you for having me on the podcast. I'm uh, also very excited about today's topic because I think it's um, it's kind of a hot topic at the moment and it's actually very um, important for optimal health and for healthy aging. And this is my personal passion as well. And that's the reason why I do what I do. Very excited uh, to hear that. So to start with... Uh, let us maybe start from the most basic question. What is NAD plus? Mm-hmm. Yes, sure. So NMN, um, sorry. <laughs> um, so NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, um, it's a very important coenzyme in the cell. It's a vital redox cofactor for metabolism and ATP production. And um, it serves as a key substrate for at least four families of enzymes involved in health span and longevity. In a, it exists in two forms. So uh, there is the oxidized form, which is the uh, um, NAD+, and then there is a reduced form, uh, which is NADH. And um, NAD+, has recently been identified as a molecule that plays a role in human sleep cycles, as well as feelings of hunger and so on. And the important part is that it basically serves as a substrate or as a fuel for our longevity genes called sirtuins. And um, this is definitely one of the reasons why it's so important for our health and our cells, because sirtuins basically regulate pretty much um, in, like the most important processes in the cell um, from uh, regulation of the epigenome, which means that they basically are like cells administrators where they decide which, which gene genes will be turned on and which genes will be turned off. And this way they promote genomic stability and they are, uh, they are responsible for other things such as DNA repair, uh, mitochondrial production as well. So um, in order to pr- produce energy, our cells are relying on the powerhouses of the cell, which are the mitochondria. So what sirtuins do is that they promote the, uh, um, the, the quality control of the mitochondria of those organelles that if they are dysfunctional, they need to be degraded through uh, various mechanisms that we will mention later as well, such as autophagy and mitophagy. Um, and from there, sirtuins are actually um, responsible for um, for many other processes as well. So uh, we actually have um, an interesting blog post that we just um, published on our website. So uh, it's a comparison between the different sirtuin genes. And um, if if someone wants to to dive deep into this, maybe we can have a link in the description uh, with the blog post. And you know you can head over to our website nmnbio.co.uk and have a look. Um, you know um, and and read in more detail about what sirtuins do and uh, besides that sirtuins are basically like a defense cascade against stressful conditions so whenever the body is kind of experiencing um, some sort of an environmental stress um, the sirtuins are being activated because um, it's like a, um, um, a, an evolutionary conserved signal that says that, oh, the environment is not very good at the moment, so I need to kind of make sure that all of the functions of the cell are optimized so I can, let's say, escape a predator or survive and so on. And this has to do with uh, you know, for example, starvation. Uh, starvation is one of the um, natural sirtuin activators, actually. So whenever uh, there is a lack of nutrients, sirtuin say, okay, so something's going wrong with my environment. So I kind of need to activate, um, you know, a bunch of genes and a bunch of functions in the cell in order to make sure that even without nutrients, I can survive and I can ma- maintain my cellular function. 
Um, another mechanism um, could be related to the so-called hormesis. So this could be a uh, hormesis is basically uh, uh, any condition that is also mild stress for the body, such as, uh, for example, sauna, because whenever we are exposed uh, to, um, you know, to heat, uh, we have the heat, uh, heat shock proteins being activated and they also activate hormesis and so on. And even when we're exercising and we're going into hypoxia, for example, uh, which is the lack of oxygen, um, you know, this is the, um, the characteristic um, a condition where we're running out of breath, basically, when we're exercising. So this tells us that, uh, you know, we don't have enough oxygen because we're actually uh, yes. demanding a lot of it during the exercise. Uh, this is also hormesis and this also activates your twins. Uh, so there is, um, there, there are really a lot of, um, you know, a lot of um, useful things that sirtuins regulate uh, within the body. And the uh, interesting... Yeah, let's part, let me just, sorry... Yeah. Sorry to interrupt a little, but just to let me, because, wow, there was a lot of hot keywords <laughs> to say, sartuins, <laughs> um, hypoxia, um, well, energy production, uh, lots of, lots of hot, trendy words, I think, for biohackers to chew in. Um, just for my own understanding, um, is it correct that there are three different kinds of sartuins, if I recall correctly? Is there sartuin one, two, three? Or are they are there no, actually more? There are actually three? Uh, seven sirtuins. So sirtuins one, seven two, sirtuins. three, four, five, six. Yes, but uh, the ones that we're uh, are the most interested in in terms of longevity is sirtuin one, which is the master regulator of human metabolism. Sirtuin three, which has to do with um, mitochondrial um, uh, function, and then sirtuin six as well, which has to do with um, epigenomic regulation and so on. Um, so those are the sirtuins that are um, uh, that, that are really involved in in basically healthy aging and maintaining everything within the cell. Right, and those different sirtuins, they are proteins, right? They, they, they are proteins in our body, yeah. and they are activated and deactivated depending on different signals. And different sirtuins mm -hmm. react to different kind of signals. But the saturating one probably is the most exciting, maybe focus on a topic here because we are interested in discussing longevity and um, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree with okay. that. Uh, my favorite sirtuin is also sirtuin one, <laughs> um, and it's been studied quite extensively so far. And it basically consumes NAD plus to regulate glycolysis, glyconeogenesis, mitochondrial homeostasis, uh, which is the balance between uh, mitochondrial degradation and mitochondrial production, um, and so on. So, uh, pretty pretty important um, enzyme. Right. So mm -hmm. saturine one actually consumes NAD one, uh, sorry, NAD plus. Yes. So that yes. there's a connection. Yeah. That's a connection between saturine and NAD plus. Mm -hmm. So that's super interesting. How in that case does it mean that if our body has higher levels of NAD plus, uh, the more activated the saturine one, so the long longevity longevity gene becomes. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. That's very interesting yet that you brought it up because actually as we age, our levels of NAD are declining and this decline is kind of, um, it starts happening probably in our mid twenties. And from there, it's basically, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> um, and we have less and less um, of, of NAD being produced in the body. And this is why sirtuins don't have that much um, that much NAD to, to, to function anymore. And the interesting part is that um, NAD actually serves as a substrate for other um, enzymes in the cell as well. And as we age, for example, there is another uh, enzyme such as uh, PARP and CD38 that also consume um, NAD+. And what happens is that we see that with age, uh, levels of our CD38 are being increased. And the reason for that is that um, CD38 is being secreted by senescent cells. So senescent cells are the cells that are basically our zombie cells that are not replicating anymore, and they're just sitting there and producing this um, this inflammatory signals that are signaling that something is is going wrong with them, basically because they're getting mm -hmm. old. 
And yes. they're also, with the signals, they're also turning into senescent cells, um, neighboring cells as well. So it's a cascade of inflammation and aging that is going on. And one of the um, uh, secretory um, um, signals that uh, senescent cells have is this, uh, this CD38 enzyme that is also competing with sirtuins for NAD production. So not only our natural levels of NAD are, 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 are declining, but we also have, um, you know, the increase of CD38. The CD38 enzyme uh, basically dictates age-related NAD decline and uh, because of this, it also affects um, sirtuin 3 activity. So it's basically an independent mechanism by which um, the levels of our sirtuin 3 are dropping and sirtuin 3 is, is uh, very important for the mitochondria. And it's because the levels of CD38 um, are being decreased. And um, I have a slide here that, um, you know, if, if um, your subscribers are watching us on YouTube at the moment can have a look at and uh, we'll probably be able to, to, to link the paper as well um, down in the description. So, uh, you know, again, the audience can kind of do their own research uh, there as well. Yeah, sounds wonderful. Since this is uh, uh, the very first um, episode of our series of uh, with you um, about NAD plus and NMN and mm -hmm. and uh, autophagy, um, mm -hmm. I would like to just briefly um, touch on how does our body make NAD. You, you just mm -hmm. already covered quite a bit, but just like a, to to put the basic um, out yeah. out for the for the for the for the audience, would you like to very briefly explain? I know that it's very complex um, complex um, uh, pathway, but uh, would you like to go through the NAD plus? Uh, production pathway briefly for us. Yes, not a problem. So um, NAD plus is basically being synthesized by various pathways, um, uh, three to be exact. So there is the de novo biosynthesis of NAD, um, and um, this can be produced by this can be triggered by the amino acid tryptophan. For example, if um, we consume foods that are rich in tryptophan, although as we can see here on the slide, there are quite a few steps here um, before um, the actual NAD. D plus production if we're taking the de novo biosynthesis pathway. Um, then there is the press handler pathway as well through the nicotinic acid. Um, and then there is the salvage pathway. So the salvage pathway has to do with um, the, um, uh, the, the NAD precursors that are basically being converted into NAD plus. And as we can see here, there are uh, three main um, NAD precursors. So there is the nicotinamide that needs to be converted to NMN first. Uh, then there is the nicotinamide riboside that can also be uh, converted into NMN and then boost the NAD or uh, there is the NMN. So NMN is a direct precursor of um, NAD, and this is the, um, the, the the beauty with this compound because this this is why it's so potent and so um, useful when you're supplementing with it. Because the, um, the 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 case with NAD is that it's actually quite a large molecule, so uh, you can't supplement with NAD to get NAD because it, it simply won't get into your cells. So uh, its right. bioavailability is quite poor and this is why you want to take an NAD booster and the most efficient one um, in order to synthesize the NAD and from what we can see here uh, NMN our nicotinamide mononucleotide is actually the most uh, potent one because it converts into NAD in one step. Wow, that was very interesting introduction to um, to uh, NAD NAD plus. Um, for myself, I actually um, learned a couple of things during this short period of time. I was aware of CD thirty um, eight uh, competing for for um, NAD plus in the body, but I wasn't aware that that was related to senescent cells. And of course, senescent cells are also a very one of the very hot topics for biohackers. How to and it's many people are aware of. Uh, some compounds like fisetin, which can yeah. potentially reduce um, senescent cells in the body. So that was very interesting for me. And um, a couple of other things, um, the pathway, uh, you mentioned trypt, 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 tryptophan, the pro amino acid, the tryptophan, and yeah. I'm aware that um, some people cannot um, 
has some some kind of deficiency in the body to some people have difficulty uh, processing tryptophan and in our body i know that for example tryptophan is is tryptophan is i think tryptophan can be a precursor to b3 vitamin b3 is that correct but that pathway can be can be potentially blocked in some of the people's for some genetic reasons i just mm-hmm. wondered if in people having that tryptophan deficiency this uh, this um, NAD plus pathway is also blocked, but that's just a side side question from my side. Yeah, I think that um, it has. A, it, it's a good thing that we can see here that there are actually multiple pathways by which we can obtain NAD because it doesn't matter whether you're tryptophan deficient or not. If you don't have NAD in your cells, you're going to be dead in 30 seconds, right? So this NAD yeah. needs to be synthesized somehow because otherwise you're not going to have your ATP production. You're not going to generate um, any energy in your mitochondria. So for sure, the NAD is being synthesized in a different way so um, if there is some sort of a, uh, of an inhibition in the in the tryptophan pathway uh, then you would be able to get your NAD from um, you know from either the price handler pathway or the salvage pathway of NAD and you know there are some food that are containing um, some uh, some molecules such as NMN and NR in small quantities as well and then you know it can be synthesized through the nicotinic pathway um so definitely the nad is being synthesized anyway <laughs> yeah fantastic mm-hmm. so um that was a very brief introduction to what is nad plus with you dr serenova and in the next episode uh, we will cover everything about the nmm what it is and you just briefly mentioned some foods even include nmm so in our next episode we will focus on um the conversation of of nmn Please um, be, 